Okay. Hey! Hey! Welcome to the first episode of the first season of the first decade of <coughs> Sunday Painting with Henry and Hamilton. Hey, um, I feel like we forgot some things. What's and it's there's... okay. But maybe but, uh, this is more... Maybe it's like a promo. Promo? Well, a pilot. <laughs> this could be like a... No. Is... Listen, here's the thing. We were going to have our phone numbers across the bottom, and we were going to share the video as a live feed so people could call in while we're painting. How do we do that? We can't do that today because I don't have internet for my computer and that's what it would require. But anyways, we're live, so let's paint. How do we paint again, Hamilton? Well, I usually start out with a little bit of um, light red, five, six, seven, four, three. Just something light, you know, uh, kind of an earthy, uh, earthy kind of tone to it. I've got Wait, my did you did you cover? Light. Did you cover your canvas in uh, a light layer of liquid white? Um, you know that's what Bob traditionally suggested, but um, <laughs> you don't have to. I instead covered mine with the. Um, well, I didn't cover it. Someone else did with the sell it if it's powerful or appears to be so, speculate on its value, sell it, the speculation, that is, the labor value, for example, still happens Wait, in what? Can you um, tell us more about, wait, so is your painting at any, what's, Ham, hey, how are you, man? That's a good question. Um, you know, I was a little rushed. Uh, today, but I felt really good. I felt really good. You felt, felt good? Yeah, I felt good. I, uh, when? Well, uh, when I woke up today, it was really nice. I woke up. I woke up a little late, and I kind of rushed off to go see the sunrise, and then the sun came out, and I went swimming. And then I was swimming while the sun was rising, and I felt like a little baby in the you water. went swimming in Lake Michigan this morning? Yeah, I did. For a while. That's like the best. How far is Lake Michigan from your house? Uh, it's probably like 30 feet. Feet? Yeah. I mean, there's some buildings in the way. There's one building in the way that would keep it from me from getting through in 30 steps. But I would say that it probably takes me 45 steps to get to the lake for swimming. Do you realize how cool that is? Uh, yes, this is like my chosen lifestyle, if I could ever do. It's like what? It, if I had any lifestyle of choice, any way to live, I think it would be doing everything that I've done so far today, including making a TV show. Including paint on Sunday, on Tuesday? Yes. Yeah, so where did you, who made your canvas? Where did you get that thing? I don't know. Uh, I think Do you know anything about it? A former graduate student, but I'm not sure, as I am currently where? a graduate student. Where? Art. For the listeners, Hamilton. Um, where did I, wait, where did I find it? Yeah, where, where are you? Uh, I'm currently in graduate school at Northwestern for art theory and practice. Uh, oh. first year, I arrived a little over two weeks ago, and, uh, so I've started to make art. And I've started with what? This is actually my first piece that I've made in graduate school. This is your first painting in graduate school? Yeah, yeah, I feel pretty good about it. This painting needs way more light red. 
starting so with a painting is a great way to make a painting. Apply it to the canvas. Um, yeah, how about you, Henry? Where are you? I'm at my studio in Marygrove, at Marygrove sure. College. It's a college in Detroit that's closing. And I've been teaching what? here since January. And when I got into this space that I'm currently in, Jim Latomsky, who had been adjunct professor of ceramics here for 40 years, had just left. And I, uh, it's an interesting situation because despite it being an adjunct job, uh, I am the only professor of ceramics here, and uh, the studio is its own building. Huh. So I manage and run this building on campus, and um, except, and that's amazing thing, except that there's a whole bunch being asked of me as an adjunct that I'm not being paid for. Um, but the entire building was just like full of junk left behind by this guy. He was a really amazing artist. He, um, and his work was all throughout the place, but I filled up 12 dumpsters full of his stuff. In this, that came out of this room that I'm in. And I didn't really start working in here on my ceramics until like uh, two months ago. Um, and then a, a couple weeks after that, I found out that the school was closing. The whole school is actually permanently closing. And it's like the first school of its of this magnitude to close its undergraduate programs in the way that it is. Like, I don't know. I was told ever by somebody, but Maybe? I don't believe that. Yeah. I feel like some undergraduate program must have closed at some point. Yeah, I mean, Black Mountain. But, I mean, it's been around for 90 years. Yeah, Black Mountain is not around. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I mean by that, I, I think it has to do with like the longevity. Maybe for the amount of time that it has ran, it's the only to close or something like that. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's a trip. And my students are like, here, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh,. Yeah, I've got this big space up here that I set up as my ceramic studio. I haven't really done, I've been glazing a lot of stuff that I made before, but I never actually made any ceramics here. Like, or at least not much. Um, but yeah, it's a, it, to be totally frank, it's a really sad place to be. Because it's moment. supposed to yeah, I just poured a lot into this place and I really love it. You know, the student body is really representative of this neighborhood here, um, which is, you know, mostly African-American and fairly poor. Um, and this has been a, a real sort of like, important part of the culture of this neighborhood for a while, yeah. years. Um, so I'm like, people are afraid that, you know, the neighborhood's going to fall apart now that the building is closing. And there are a bunch of like, tenured faculty, it's like, I'm, I'm young and like, yeah, I put in a ton of time this summer into working on this place, but super invested in it, but like, oh, I've been here my whole career. Year, and it was just like there was absolutely no lead time. We found out on August 9th that the place was closing. But maybe and, it's important to like put it in context that you 
you did invest quite a bit of time, like you had a whole plan to turn this into something, and you were working on it for about a month before they, a month straight before they told you their quote. It was more than a month straight, yeah. I mean, but the, um, ooh, lack, ooh, uh, Um, what was I going to say? Sorry, it's hard to paint and talk at the same time. Um, you have this issue. I have a way of finger You painting. can draw. Oh. But when it comes to um, making a painting. Say what? You can drive a car and talk so much, but when it comes to painting. Yeah, something different about it, I guess. Um, No, I mean, yes, I had invested a lot of time. I mean, something that's really interesting about, like, getting a job in academia is, like, if you want to get a job, uh, like a full-time tenure-track job, you tend to need teaching experience, but then you can't get, uh, so you have to have at least three years teaching experience in a lot of cases, which basically means that you have to do like this indentured servitude of adjuncthood where you know you're paid nothing to to teach and in a lot of those cases you also don't have very much autonomy over to get to teach or um you know kind of design building the space building the trajectory of the program and so this was definitely a really amazing opportunity to like get to do that as an adjunct. So despite the fact that yes, it was a, a ton of work, um, you know, in relationship to pay, I really felt like it was going to be a worthwhile investment for me in terms of, you know, being able to show when I do maybe apply for a full-time job someday, say, you know, look, I was able to make, you know, these sorts of things happen. I turned around this space and did yada, yada, yada. So I, I guess I, I just felt like I kind of struck gold and it pisses me off that I'm not going to get to show what I could have done with this place. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like... Um... You deserve a pat on the back for uh, for like going through with it and continuing on and not feeling um, hesitant about teaching in the future. Like you, you still have maintained your your head. I think I Even do if, feel hesitant about teaching in the future. You know, I I I just uh, my issue is that. I kind of have this muscle memory at this point where it's like what I'm doing is working toward a teaching job and I'm really wondering whether or not that is like a, a good idea, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm focusing on my work and I'm just going to take doors as they come, but in terms of having a job that pays me, you know, at the moment I'm... I've got like a lead on a potential job and I'm, I'm kind of like interested. It's a sabbatical replacement position and I'm interested in it because, you know, I'll be able to say like, yeah, I was full time at this place or whatever. But then when I think about yeah. the type of the, I'd say like the state of art education as it exists in this city, from what I know from it, I mean, so I, I should say this, on the same day, I was also teaching at Wayne State University, which, you know, is the state university here in Detroit. And uh, so I called them up to let them know of my sort of like increased availability now that I've lost my job here at Mary Grove. So, um, which, you know, my, my time here ends in, uh, 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 December, um, and 
And so I said, you know, like, hey, I lost my job there. If there's any opportunities in foundations or anything like that, let me know. I said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. We were just about to call you. Um, we're having financial issues and enrollment issues as well, and we've cut a majority of our adjuncts out of the department. And we had to cut your class. Hmm. I definitely have reason to be disheartened about the opportunities academia tends to offer, might, might offer me in the future. I and mean, I lost both my jobs in the same day this fall or summer. Um, thankfully at Mary Grove, they're doing what's called a teach out. So there is this one last semester of classes and my class did actually run. So I'm not totally unemployed at the moment, but I guess I'm like just about to maybe leave for next semester to go do this sabbatical replacement thing. And, but I also at the same time want to stay committed to, like we just bought this building and I want to stay committed to this community. And I want to like really be embedded and be a part of it. And, uh, you know, I don't think leaving is a very good way to do that. So I'm like wondering, like, is it worthwhile for me to continue trying to pursue this academia thing immediately by like going and doing this academia thing? Or do I like, you know, just hang out here, get a coffee shop, shop job and try to pay my bills and keep making my art and focus on this building. You know? Or maybe even like I'm about to have this show, who knows, maybe I'll start selling my work. Super interested in selling my work. Or at least in making it for this specific intent of selling it, you know? I went and talked to, um, I mean, it's kind of funny here because I feel like, um, you know, this is my like first, really, I have one of my first classes just yesterday. But uh, there's so many, I really can't sell the program to people enough or tell them about it enough. It really is pretty sweet, the kind of deal. Um, that they give, which is to say they, it's a full ride and they pay for you to be here enough to, for all of your living expenses and all of your art expenses for the most part. But um, I am in a state of kind of shock, I think, because I've had nothing but shitty jobs, really, um, in, in Detroit. And so my concern is how do I how do I have a better position when I get out of here? And they're already advertising like career initiative about like better jobs you can have in the future. But there's also part of me that's like, Jesus, I just came to graduate school and I just started making stuff. Why am I already thinking about two years into the future? Is that a good idea to begin with? Um, and most people said it's not, but I don't know. What, what do you think, Henry? Yeah, I definitely Wait. would not be concerned with your, what, wherever this is going to take you. Yeah, I guess my thought is that, um, like, I'm in this place that has infinite um, things off knowing, like, a type of skill that, at the very least, would give me some sort of base job that I could do. I, I actually, like, one of my professors talks about it um, when about like the future of art and what's going to happen, that we're going to be more and more project-based artists. We're less concerned with being in our little rooms, you know, uh, in solitude, away from the world, just making paintings. Um, just like we're doing now, this is a project. Um, and for that reason, artists are infinitely employable because they are capable in a like a more neoliberal economy because they are capable of doing so many tasks in a period of time. Um, but I don't know. I'd have to say that like having been out in the world for the past seven years, I didn't feel like the world was at my fingertips necessarily as far as jobs went. I didn't hear when the I, end of that. Can you say that? You didn't. You didn't feel like what? Uh, 
I didn't feel like um, the world was at my fingertips. Right. Um, and I was in the world. And for that reason, it's like maybe Lane's point of view is coming from the academy, which is kind of removed from that world. Yeah, you think? Absolutely. So, but I mean, the future is not looking too bright as far as jobs go for us. For us who are thinking about teaching, I feel like. Um, and there are people starting up their own schools, stuff like that. I don't know, it's a very tricky position to figure out because then again, at the same time, I think maybe people also struggle to become professors, you know, that there was still uh, a difficulty to like try and do that. Even on a gallery, if we think about like the painting that I'm painting on now, which is saying to sell this object. What? That, I mean, if we think about selling the works, I mean, that also doesn't quite make sense. Um, what? If, if, is your question like, are you allowed to I mean, appropriate? No, no, I mean, my, my point is just that I think um, in addition to the academic world feeling the squeeze from this economy and for the changing economy, I also think that galleries are feeling the squeeze as well. I mean, I think they're going to crop up however they can, be it in apartments or just straight up on the web or not even having a gallery but just going to art fairs and selling stuff. But um, it, it seems like... Uh, the galleries that do remain are getting bigger and bigger and are less and less approachable for types of work that the typical like graduate student would try and find for doing their works. Yeah, I it's kind of like that's that's kind of business in general though you know that's not like the art world even that's just you know like when you start thinking about art as a commodity and you're a business who sells it then it's just a business who happens to sell that sort of commodity it's just like a furniture store or anything else except it has like a different air of sophistication, you know? But then, like, in terms of how that business actually ends up operating, it's really not very different at all, which is evidenced by exactly what you're talking about, right? This, yes. this upscaling of it that feels really dehumanizing and isn't putting a sort of rigorous creative practice first. It's putting commodity first. Yeah. What are you painting? Oh, I was trying to find some kills white paint from this paint bucket. But, uh, it was all dried up. But what am I painting on my painting? Yeah, wait, are you, you're painting over the, the source painting you have? Yes. With white? Well, I was trying to, but I don't have any white paint yet, so. Well, I can't um, see your painting. Oh, really? Your, your video's not coming through, so you'll have to describe it to me. Describe it. So, um, there are 
several things going on in the painting. I am overlaying my light red, absolutely permanent uh, oil paint from Acme. That's uh, five, six, seven, four, three. Over top of this uh, painting that existed before it, uh, called Sell It, or that's what I'm calling it. And um, that was the yeah. name of the painting. Well, that's what I named it. But maybe people keep the same name. Um, and it's important to note, like a lot of oil painters like to mix. They're in very specific colors that they use. What? I'm using colors like um, Viridian uh, Green or Cadmium Red, um, uh, Cadmium Yellow. I'm looking down at all of these. Um, but you know, you can mix them too directly onto the canvas. And that technique is called um, a la prima. And it was really championed by Bob Ross. Him. Yeah. How do you do you do you really feel that it's problematic to paint over that painting? No, I don't. Because they left what it. it at what how much of it do you have to cover it up? How much do you have to cover up to feel comfortable with? Well, I think that you should just focus on making works to where you feel like what's on. And I don't feel content with it. But that's a special. I should also say that I do feel You think content. they should focus on what? Um, I feel like you should focus on being content with the work or finding some sort of resting place where you feel like it can just be on its own. Um, but I don't feel that yet. I feel the need to keep going with this painting. But I should note, though, too, that I feel good about this primo. Promo? It's a promo. It's primo, though. And that I have to go right now because it's... You have to go right now? I do. I could come back, but I have to go, like, right now. Right now? Right now, actually. Almost late. I wish I could see what you painted. I, yeah, I wish it was coming up, but it's not. I don't know. Can you see my painting? Uh, I can. Henry, I need to go very soon. Um, it's... Okay, that was a good ham. It was good hanging out, bud. Yeah, yeah. Um, we could do another episode today if you want. Because, Call me. You know, I, I'll probably end up just going home. I'm kind of going nuts in my own studio right now, which is where I am. And if I stay here, then I'll have to continue going nuts. I don't want to. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, All right. Well, I will talk to you soon. I'll give you a call after my meeting. Yeah, sounds good. Don't okay, forget to turn cool. off our video. Wait, can you see me now? No. Damn it. All right, well, I love you, man, and I will Don't talk forget to, you to soon. turn off our video. Okay, I won't. I'm going to go right now. Okay, okay. love you too, right, buddy. Okay, bye. Later.